Looking for a job as a makeup artist, teaching ballroom dancing, or blow drying hair? In some parts of the country, you'll need government certification before anyone can pay you for these services or face jail time. Occupational licensing laws, which apply to one in three U.S. jobs, restrict consumer choice by protecting businesses from competition. They also impose substantial costs on job seekers. Arizona has one of the nation's most heavily regulated labor markets, but now the state's businessman turned governor, Doug Ducey, who's the former CEO of Coldstone Creamery, has made occupational licensing reform a priority. What I wanted Arizona to be is the best place in the country to live, work, and do business. And part of that is beginning a business as well as scaling a business. And that was our focus on improving that, that structure of, of government and really stopping the, the bullies that were part of the boards and commissions. Since occupational licensing laws are particular to each state, if you're a certified hair dryer, say in Virginia, that doesn't mean you can move to Arizona and just start working. First, you have to complete a thousand hours of training before you can obtain a state cosmetology license. Governor Ducey is backing a new law that would change that. Just because somebody packs up that moving van in Chicago, Illinois, they don't lose their skills on the way to the state of Arizona. So why should somebody have to suffer a burden of thousands of dollars or weeks or months of recertification in a skill that they already have? We had a tough time figuring out how many regulations there are in the state of Arizona. With a Cracker Jack staff, it took us probably 18 months to figure out there were 11,000 regulations in the state. In 2017, Ducey issued an executive order requiring that state licensing boards review and provide justification for rules the governor's office deemed excessive. The next day, he signed the Right to Earn a Living Act, which restricted state boards from issuing any new occupational licensing rules that couldn't be justified on health and safety grounds. I think it's important that we remember who the voters are and who the citizens are, and we're here to serve them. Too many of these boards and commissions exist to stop competition, to stifle and protect the status quo, and we're changing that in Arizona. My issue is that uh, we don't really know what the standards are in these other states, and so why should we dumb down our standards uh, just to deregulate, basically. I mean, I see this as sort of deregulation for the sake of deregulation. Representative Pamela Powers Hanley of Tucson is opposed to the legislation. What I see here is, you know, over and over and over again, you know, throwing out uh, licenses and certifications. And uh, there was other bills that were proposed in the House this year that would go even farther than this as far as deregulating, deregulating occupations. And I think at some point it gets a little risky for the populace. How so? I mean, because if you have, if you're successful in another state doing this, I mean, it's not like those skills don't stop well, when you come into the state. Well, yes, but with this, we're only asking for one year of experience. I mean, what, what's the definition of successful? And then also, how are we checking up on these people? What about this idea of public safety? Because I do think there's a fear that you're actually going to attract people from states that have lower standards than Arizona. Public health and public safety is always going to be a priority for this administration. We're going to work with the individuals that are coming and with the licensing boards in which they came from to make sure that we're making good decisions. But I'm confident with the legislation we have, with the guardrails uh, and details that it involves, that we'll be bringing qualified people here. And then ultimately, uh, it will be the opportunities that will determine their success. Arizona's overregulated labor market drew public attention in 2017 when it came out that a student barber named Juan Carlos Montes de Oca was being investigated by the State Cosmetology Board for giving haircuts to homeless vets without a license. The bullies at the State Cosmetology Board sought to stop him and stall his career because he hadn't yet kissed their ring. We thought he was just doing a good act for people that were in need. And this was a young person just in the uh, formative years of, of their, their career. We thought that was the wrong thing to do. And we were very pleasantly surprised by the response that we received from the electorate saying, yes, we don't need this overreach. We don't need this overregulation. The new bill recognizing out-of-state certification recently passed the House and is currently under consideration in the state Senate. 
we still have to prove it in the marketplace. We still need to get it through both houses of the, of the legislature. DC credits is deregulatory agenda for Arizona's booming economy. We're the fourth fastest growing state in the nation. Maricopa County, where we are here in Greater Phoenix, is the number one fastest growing county in America two years running. We're a state that has 70% of the adults here were born somewhere other than the state of Arizona. I don't think that there's a better leading indicator in this country than that people pack up a U-Haul truck and say, that's where I want to move to. In the game of states, people vote with their feet, and Arizona's winning. Thank <music> you.